a lot to talk about. You've got a, a big city council meeting tonight, which I think is going to draw some attention. But before we get into that, let's talk about the big announcement on Tuesday about the Southwest Bypass finally getting funded. Yes. And I know that you have uh, – <laughs> Farrell Blunt called you a bulldog on Tuesday, saying that you had uh, continued to bulldog the Department of Transportation trying to get this done. And I think Farrell uh, probably bulldogged the governor. He did. And, uh, you know, you guys worked as a, as a team. And uh, finally, this, this superhighway that we've been hearing about since 1989 is going to get built starting next year. Well, I'll tell you, Henry, often so many times things get in the way of communication in your community and you have people that don't communicate, maybe don't get along, maybe have reasons in the past or whatever. But uh, the most proudest thing for me here in Greenville is that we have such a core group of people that realize that putting this community first is what matters. And I think it's something that really I wish more communities were like that. And we find reasons to find the way to make this community better. And let me tell you, uh, transportation dollars are gone. You don't get those checks anymore. They just don't happen. We all know economically across the country things are tight. We know in North Carolina, uh, everyone knows how tight budgets are. And this is a project that was literally dead two years ago. Yeah, I, that's what I, I can I, talk I, about I, that now. The public doesn't know that. I remember asking two years ago and uh, <clears throat> was told, yeah, is, I was like, are we ever going to get that, that uh, bypass built? And I, I don't remember who it was, but somebody at the state level told me two years ago, it's just impossible right now. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a project that had been pushed off the cliff, literally, and it was going to compete against local bridges and sidewalks. That was the way that it was going to be thrown back into the mix. But what we did is, and I'll give Mayor Tripp a lot of credit, um, uh, Aiden made a great commitment a decade ago with their infrastructure to go out and meet this bypass, anticipating what that growth would mean for that whole corridor. Uh, the future of Eastern North Carolina is in these transportation corridors. If you don't have foundational, if we can't get to you, and Farrell said this at the press conference, if you can't get to you, business can't get to you, you're not going to have business. So your choice in North Carolina is, and, and no offense to Mississippi, but do you want to be Mississippi or you do want to be a progressive state? And you have to plan decades ahead with that with infrastructure. You know, there's there's been all sorts of uh, Internet comments, uh, some on our Facebook pages uh, about this. I just reading some McGee was making me aware of this morning where People are saying, how does Greenville really benefit from this? Because it's all, all we're doing is taking traffic away from Greenville. Uh, and so I'll let you answer that. But, uh, but I'll, I'll start it by saying, have you ever seen what's happened in North Raleigh after they built 540? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Could you I, imagine Glenwood or, or major arteries yeah. in Raleigh jammed with uh, heavy truck traffic, what that would be like? Yeah. Our, our, yeah. what, what we're building here. And by, and by the way, now 540 is a traffic yeah. jam during, during, uh, during rush hour. Well, we're not building for Greenville 2014. We're building for Greenville 2020, 2030, 2050. Yeah. The anticipated growth. We know this city is going to be well over 100,000 within the next decade. Uh, we know that we are the hub of the east and we continue to grow. We also know that the strategies regionally depend on how we all work together. You can't put your blinders on and just look at two boulevards and take a snapshot of what your community is supposed to be like. We're trying to push most of the industrial traffic, the heavy traffic, the, the commerce traffic, give them where they can get to Greenville and move forward and move to other communities quickly where we can be a hub in that process. So uh, with the Hampton Roads corridor being pushed now uh, on the state level, that is the only deep water port that we have in, Eastern, in, in North Carolina, period. Uh, uh, Wilmington is not a deep water port. It never will be, Henry, because of the, the underlying shell structure there uh, within the port, uh, underwater, submerged. So you mean Moorhead City? No, I mean Wilmington. It will never be no, a deep but you, port. No, but you say we, will, we do have one in Moorhead City. We have one in the works. We have yeah. a small deep water port in Moorhead, yeah. which has to be the future for North Carolina. We have to be able to expand that. The key to that is being able to have connectivity between Hampton Roads with their deep water ports in, in Virginia and also ours in the Moorhead area, and a hinge point of commerce, which we are planning to grow here in this whole Quad East concept of having the Goldsboro's, Wilson, Greenville, Kinston, even Rocky Mountain, Newburn to some extent, all bringing uh, excellence in terms of when we're, we're, uh, when we're out selling this community. We don't need to be selling Greenville against Kinston. We're selling uh, you know, us as a region against regions in the West Coast, in the Midwest, other parts of the, of the, the world, actually where we have excellence in medicine, education, pharma, you know, uh, uh, global trans park, military, all those here as a core group. 
And we have to be able to get, move, and use all that together. That's what this is about. It's about your kids and your grandkids, just like your grandparents made their investments for us, for their connectivity, which we benefit from now. It's about what we're doing to grow this region so it has a future. You, you mentioned Quad East, and that's a term. Uh, I think I think you the, you were the person that came up with that idea. What, what what exactly is the concept of Quad East? Well, it isn't a license plate. I'll tell you that it's not a GTP license plate. What it is is a philosophy that uh, we have seen successful communities use across across the across the planet, actually. And you have the uh, Research Triangle Park, and the uh, the triangle works together as an economic unit. Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, Mooresville, that whole area as an economic unit. The triad works together as an economic unit. Charlotte Metro works together as an economic unit. The economic developer in Gastonia is working with the economic developer in Charlotte, in Ballantyne. There is a cohesive unit. They realize that what well, I may have a strength in my particular part of the community that you may not have and vice versa. How can we maximize our opportunity regionally? So if I can bring jobs 15, down the road, 15 miles down the road in Kinston, or they can bring jobs here or Wilson, and my population can, uh, one spouse can drive there and work and the other one can work here, and they all have great jobs and are paying tax base, then what more could you want? What more yeah. could you want in this community? Yeah. Quad East is about that concept. And we have uh, unanimous support from the county commissioners and municipalities across this region that have all voted. They, they've, they've put it to uh, their boards in support of the Quad East concept, basically of, a, of agreeing with getting interstate quality transportation a simple goal first, interstate quality transportation, connecting all these communities together, and then what can we do as a shared base for economic development? When you say quad, that, that, is, that, that implies four. What it connotates the, four. There's what, a, what are the four? Well, the initial four, as we continue to expand, yeah. are Greenville, Kinston, Goldsboro, and Wilson. Okay. And that, that creating interstate quality connectivity is something that I'm committed to. That's one of the things I ran on when I first time ran for mayor is mm -hmm. in order for Greenville to grow, one of the major checklists for corporations is they look at do you have interstate connectivity? Do you have the amenities? Can you train our workforce? We have so many other elements, but, you know, without the, the importance of a strong transportation grid, rail, air, road, we have to have those as a qualifier to be able to take us to the next level and compete going forward. We, uh, 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 Farrell Blunt talked about this at the press conference. The Department of Transportation is in favor of this, and I know you've talked about it before. The mm -hmm. idea of interstate designation so that Highway 264 becomes interstate what? 795? What is it? Well, what we what they actually designate number-wise, that, that remains yeah. to be seen. But what like, that does, it, but it, gets, it, could, it could be instead of Highway 264, Interstate 895 or something like that. It'll right? be a shared, you know, some type of shared nomenclature. It'll be 264, future, you know, Interstate, right. whatever, 295 or whatever that may be. Right. Uh, but we, we see that the important thing, what that does is that gets you on the federal TIP, so to speak, in terms of their mm -hmm. planning for the future. And we are at that and, perfect and it also, crossroads. It also helps with economic development, Clearly. is it not? Clearly. Because when you tell people you're, you've got interstate designation through your community, they know that the they, they don't have to go check what kind of roads you have. They know you've got the kind of roads that can support, uh, you know, a big company trucks and, and transportation things that they need if they're going to build a, a, a new plant here or something like that. Yeah, even at this point, 264, which was built not that long ago, connecting us to the triangle in such a quick way, it is built close to interstate, uh, spe you know, specifics now. We mm -hmm. need a couple of feet of width. The depth of the uh, the paving and the, the depth of the roads are already to par. Yeah. The overpasses are the proper heights. Yeah. Matter of fact, compared to I-95, we're, we're way off the scale in terms of being prepared. And also this $250 million southwest bypass, over 12.9 miles, it is being built to interstate specs. Mm -hmm. So we are planning and planning this thing, again, not for 2014, but for the next two or three or four decades for what this community is going to look like. There's some strong feelings about this um, report that's going to be made to the city council tonight. <laughs> uh, we originally thought that the bond committee would come back to you guys and say we probably need about $10 million in this bond referendum for roads, street repair. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure everybody knew that they were going to come with a new project. They came back. They're, they're going to they're going to propose about 10 million in roads, from what we understand, to you guys tonight. But they're also they've come up with a new concept of uh, spending 12 million dollars to build a huge sports complex 
that would uh, house uh, a lot of travel teams and bring a lot of uh, people from out of the community into the community for weekend sporting events and things like that. Uh, $12 million is a lot of money, and there are a lot of people who uh, disagree with this concept. There are some people who think it's a great idea. Have you, uh, have you made a decision on where you are on that? Well, no, and I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think you always should give a chance whenever you put citizens in a position to be able to review key information, to, to be open-minded to their input. And my, my, my appointees uh, were Will Franklin, you know, with, with uh, First, First Citizens, citizens yeah. and uh, who is head of the, the chamber, and also Bill Clark. Those were my choices. Each, uh, the mayor and each council member had the opportunity to appoint two members. Mm -hmm. And those were individuals, I thought, who would well represent and be a good balance with the, the many members. And for the most part, I think it's a very balanced group that they've put together. Mm -hmm. You've got people there with a wide ranging of experience. What we're really talking about here is growing up as a city. We have to become more professional in our approach and how we approach our growth. And uh, some things that became abundant to me in coming on board here just a couple, a few years ago, it hadn't been that long ago, Henry, it's been three years at this point, is looking at our infrastructure as a city. And, and I'm an old guy, we talked about DOT a while ago when I was 21, 22 years old. Uh, to pay my bills as, as, a, um, as a side job, I went out and, and signed right away for dirt roads across the, the <laughs> District 2 across eastern North Carolina. And I knew what infrastructure does for communities. And it, it turns out over the past however many years, Greenville has been shortchanging its infrastructure in terms of the investment. And, uh, and I think many times there were other priorities across the board for a community. But when you're, when you're growing your balance as a city and you are investing the citizens' dollars back into your stormwater, your sidewalks, your streets, your roads, then you're just shortchanging your future. And my approach is the same approach that Charlotte and Raleigh and other cities have taken. You have got to have a mature bond process. And I don't mean a one-year, one-time bond without a thought about the future. You need to have a 10-year bond strategy is what you need to have in this city. And every couple of years, you should have a couple of projects that are on the radar that a group with public input are kind of eyeing as what would be good projects that will help move this city forward in a substantial way every couple of years. So we need a 10-year bond strategy. But we have an immediate need right now. We are hemorrhaging on our roads. And this is something that came to my attention about a year and a half or so ago, especially when Kevin Mulligan came on, uh, on board as charge of public works. When we went out into the forensics of our city, we found that we had over 200 miles of roads in this city that are near failure. And we have over 700, 800 miles of roads across the city. But what failure means is instead of just resurfacing, you have some subsurface problems that may take a $10,000 fix into a million dollar fix if you don't deal with it now. So we have about a $20 million uh, nut that we need to hit if we're going to be able to bring this city up to par. And I kicked and screamed and, and with the last council, and we were able to designate an initial $4 million to put to work, to go ahead and start resurfacing the worst of the worst of our roads. And then with the new council, the first thing I brought up is said we have to, we must focus on going after these roads. We have to catch our infrastructure up before it becomes a fiscal cliff, Henry, that you and I are paying for for 20 years. If we address the problem now, we're ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. If we don't, then you got that hanging over your head. So I propose looking at the bond strategy. And the reason I did that is because Greenville's bonding capacity is the most it's been in probably 25 years. We've paid off a tremendous amount of debt, and the, uh, the, the rates uh, are the lowest they've been in our generation. So those combine to, to provide a, a significant tool for Greenville to focus on a couple things that we need to do that we know will be a foundation to move us forward. Now, I say all that to say this. Uh, I appreciate the work of the committee, but uh, they were – tasked with a very difficult situation. Uh, and in many ways, I feel sorry. They were, they were forced to meet for seven or eight times and try to absorb everything the city does across the board, which I think is very difficult. Uh, I think that the idea of doing our roads is a no-brainer. And I've heard from the public across the board, and they support that. We need to do that now. Matter of fact, if we're going to have a bond, I think as, as much as that that we can have focused on getting our roads up to par, Henry, and have a consistent program going forward is extremely important. But the, but the, uh, the project about the, the sports complex, in my opinion, is one that needs to be further vetted. I look forward to the details tonight. I am all for looking at that as a part of our long-term bond strategy, and I want more information, I think, when Dennis Mitchell presents tonight. Uh, Mayor Allen, Tom, we, we got like uh, 30 seconds left. Um, I just wanted to ask you, after tonight's meeting, 
What is the process? Will you guys vote tonight on what to include in a bond, or is this just the beginning of a discussion? The bond process will be a year-long process, and we'll bring the public back in and engage in the year-long process. I do not anticipate a vote tonight. I anticipate us many questions, having you know, taking the report that will be presented. And at our, our uh, goal setting in January, we'll probably go in and, and kick this off. All right, Mayor Alan Thomas. Alan, good to see you. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you.